are so excited to be with you today, aren't we, Philippi? Oh, yes. My name is Philip. Did you just hit me with something? Got something drop on my head. <laughs> Delicious. It what? went into my... <laughs> What is your name? <laughs> Where did you my mouth? You really? You are <laughs> good shot. Did you my mouth? Stop crying. Sniff <laughs> it out and you'll be fine. We are so excited uh, to be here with you today. So today we are only talking about one person. We are going to talk about Ruth. Talking about Ruth. <coughs> Ruth and Naomi. They are found in the old testament. Okay, do you need Heimlich? I need some of your apple stuck in my mouth! I'm Ima Smart. And I'm Ivan B. Smart. And we're the smart brother and sisters. I am Dr. B. So Smart. Today, we are going to be talking about the attraction power of magnets and how this magnet is able to hold on to my ball bearing. Over here, I have my two assistants, I'm a smart and I wanna be smart. We will be using the magnets to guide the little ball bearing through the maze. Watch closely as I guide the little ball bearing through the maze and out to the other side. You know, this reminds me of about how our parents often work with children to help guide them through their lives, just like I am guiding this bearing through the maze. The Bible says, train a child in the way he should go, and when they are old, they will not depart from it. Our parents, God, guide our children so that they can make good choices in life. Thank you very much. forget to buy your family summer bucket for only ten dollars the bucket includes nine family summer devotionals crafts games videos and much more please call the church or email pastor nicole if you would like to purchase a bucket we are almost sold out but don't worry we'll make more if you want one too this is a really cool superhero ruth 
but before we get to know her, we need to learn about her history. This is Naomi. Now, Naomi was a very devout Jew, and she had two sons whom she really loved. At the time, they were living in Judah, which would probably be around there. But while they were living in Judah, there was a great famine. So they traveled all the way from Judah to Moab. But the journey was long, and unfortunately, Naomi's husband passed away, and she was filled with grief. But she told her two sons to marry, and they did. One married Ruth, and the other married Orpha, and they all lived happily ever after. I'm just kidding. And they died. So Orpha and Ruth, heartbroken, because how could this ever happen, had to choose whether to stay with Naomi or to leave their mother-in-law. Naomi was filled with grief, so she told them that there was nothing left for them. So Orpha kissed her mother-in-law on the cheek and went back to her father's household. But Ruth, Ruth chose differently. Ruth looked into Naomi's eyes and said, Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Naomi, too weary to argue, said, Okay, sure. And they traveled to Naomi's hometown, Bethlehem. Let's be honest, travel can change some people. Ruth, she started to be more religious, and Naomi, well, she just got old. Now that they were in Jerusalem, they were really poor, because at the time, the husbands would get all the food. So Ruth volunteered, and she was like, hey, let me go and try to find some wheat for us. So she went to this one field, and when she got there, there was a man, and he found favor on her. So he told her that she can take all the wheat that she wanted home. She was so excited to show Naomi all the food that she gathered. Naomi was like, that's so cool. That guy seems really nice. You should go and marry him. So she did. And then they had a baby boy. Naomi was finally happy. Through all the tribulations, she learned how to trust in God. So Ruth wasn't a superhero because she married a man. No, she was a superhero because she trusted in God. She was loyal to her mother-in-law even though times got tough. She showed kindness and she cared for others. We need more people like Ruth in our world because she was kind and caring and loyal. since I'm seeing you, I've decided to make a craft for you that goes with your story about Ruth. Ruth is personally one of my favorite characters because she was a widow and I'm also a widow. So today for our craft, we're going to have two options for a basket. One's a little bit more complicated and take you a bit longer, but the other one's a little simpler. Oh, you need some stuff to make this. You're going to need uh, some glue, some scissors, Scotch tape, just in case we make a mistake. Construction paper, three or four pieces. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to do is take your pencil and you're going to try and draw an oval as large as you can. So it's kind of going to look like this. Now I want you to take a really close look at this because if you notice, there's some dotted lines that are green. On the green lines, you're going to go with your scissors. So. The red lines are really important. It means do not cut. But if you happen to make a mistake, 
That's why I have my scotch tape here. The first thing we're going to do is cut out the top handle of the basket. So we're going to fold it in half, take your scissors, and do a nice long snip like that. Then you put your scissors inside. So we're going to cut all the way around the green line and stop at the red. And I'm going to go across the green line and make sure that I stop at the red. Then you go to the green line around here. You fold your paper in half, take your scissors, and on the green line, just do a snip. And once again, you cut along the green line stop at the red and it's all cut out stays together i'm going to so show you how to make the strips you can take one or two colors so you're going to cut along the line so we have our strips take the basket and we fold it from the bottom to the top of the basket up here just you don't want to do a great big huge snip so i take my scissors and i do a snip snip Snip, snip, snip all the way across. You take them and you cut, but you stop just before you get to the top. You take your basket, you start on the top with the first one. So you go over the top of the basket, then you go under that. So this time I'm going to put it underneath. Go under the first one and over. Then you're going to continue until yours will look similar to this. The last step that we're going to do, you pick up each one of these little guys and just put a drop of glue down. It's just more to hold it in place because you're going to glue it down anyways. You're going to take your scissors and you're just going to cut along the outside edge. You want to glue all the way around the handle. Do the same thing, glue all the way across this top one. On this, you're going to glue just around the outside edge. As you see in the finished one, there's a little pocket. Ruth would have used that for putting her weed in. That's your basket. The finishing touch is you have to go outside and go for a walk and see if you can find some grain to put inside. This is the second craft for Ruth. So for this craft, you're going to need two paper plates, some felt pens, a stapler, but you're probably going to need mom and dad to help you with the stapler. It's going to need some glue. We're going to need a hole punch and a pair of scissors and some pretty ribbon. We're going to take two paper, one of your two paper plates and you're going to fold it in half as best you can. You're just going to cut along right down the middle of the plate. And in Bible times, we couldn't go to the store and buy baskets. They were woven. We're going to make this our own weaving. So if you see on this is Gail's, I drew some lines. You can just take your felt pans and you can scribble on them or make some designs on them. So then you're going to need your whole plate. So I'm just going to do re be really generous with the glue. Put it all the way around. Then you're going to put just put the glue on the plate on top. This is where you might need an adult to help. You're going to take your stapler and just do one staple at the top. There we go. Put one on each side. The final step is to take, find the center of the top, punch a hole through, and then your fancy ribbon, tie a knot on top. You could go out and gather some grass and put your wheat inside this one too.
Hey kids, so today we're going to be making homemade pizza with Landon and Alexa. First, take out two baking sheets and also some parchment paper. Then, set your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Make sure you ask mom and dad for some help for that. Then go ahead and lay out the bread that you're going to use for the base of your pizza. You can use whatever kind of bread you would like. Then, add the tomato sauce on top. Then, have an older sibling or your parents cut some of the toppings you would like to put on. You can put on some vegetables, maybe some meat, whatever is your favorite. Then, have an older sibling or a parent slice a brick of cheese so that you can grate it. Once you have grated the cheese, put it all over the pizza. Then have mom or dad, or even an older sibling, put on oven mitts and put both trays of pizza into the oven carefully. The recipe that we have referred to recommends that you put it in the oven for 10 to 15 minutes. But, make sure you check it every once in a while to make sure nothing is burnt, or you can also rotate the baking sheets. Once the cheese has melted to your liking, Take it out of the oven and let it cool for a little bit. Then, once it's cooled down, you'll have delicious pizza to eat. All right! Thank you, thank you. Yo, what's up, spa kids at home? It's your girls. Ash and Tree, and we out here ready for your next memory burst. We're gonna give you the good beats, the good soul, the good music to help you remember this memory burst, right? Yeah. He gets all redeemer saves. Uh. All right. All right. So this is from Ruth 4 14. Where's it from? Ruth 4 14. Yeah. Where's it from? Ruth 4 14. Uh. Ruth 4 Fourteen, yeah. Ruth four. Fourteen, yeah. Ruth four. Fourteen, yeah. Blessed be the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, who has not left you this day, this day, without a redeemer. Why? Because our redeemer saves. Yeah. Go. Hey. Blessed be the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, who has not left you this day, this day, without. A redeemer, because our redeemer saves. Yeah. 
Hi, spa families. Uh, so good to see you here on a Saturday morning. Glad that you're a part of Spa Kids at Home. We are really enjoying putting this together for you and your families to have a spiritual moment or moments with God our Father. And you know what? We like to celebrate, just like celebrating that school is done. Yay! Tell me, what was your favorite thing about school being done? Is it no more homework? Is it not going online? Is it, oh, maybe maybe actually you're missing your friends. Maybe actually you miss school. Well, you know what, I wanna hear about it. And you know what, if you are younger and you don't go to school yet, why don't you tell me something that you enjoyed from the videos today? And you know what, we always have a prize. So the contest winner this time is going to play hockey. That's right, you're gonna get your own set of hockey pucks and sticks. Let's hear from you. It's Nicole at surreychurch.org. N-I-C-O-L-E at surreychurch.org. Get your mom or dad to help you and let's know what you're doing and what you're excited about. Wow.